look in the man that he will look after you. The girl has to pay the money. This, this is, is exactly what happens. This is a and, man. He need, and he needs to have a salary. With religious commitment is that a lot of the Muslims nowadays don't... This is the problem with Shia Quran. The, the authentic and the non-authentic come up when you type it in. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to our episode on youth We discussed by Allah's grace a few issues and challenges which face the youth and uh, perhaps it is time that we start talking about friendship Who do you hang out with? Does it affect your commitment, your religious commitment? Is it something that is, there's a lot of leeway? Perhaps you can elaborate on this idea and this fact in Islam. Friendship, of course. Whoever you hang around with definitely affects how you behave. And uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself informed us that المرء على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من A person is going to follow the way of his friend. So you have to be careful whom you befriend. And whatever people do, most likely, you're going to feel comfortable. And when you're with them, you don't want to be different from them sometimes. It's very difficult. And so you have that peer pressure. So you have to look for people who are practicing, who are on the deen, and they love Islam. And this is one of the best ways to help you to be strong. And the Shaykh can elaborate on that, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man wa lam nattaba hudai ilayhum al-deen. Amma ba'd. In this regard, uh, about the friendship and the, who is the real friend. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what will happen on the day of resurrection, the day of yawm al-qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ala khillau yawma idhin ba'duhum li ba'dhin adu. إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ سبحان الله الأخلاء the friends on the day of resurrection they will be foes enemies towards each other except the righteous so all these ties of uh, friendship in this world all these ties will be severed will be cut but the friendship the real friendship is the friendship and the real brotherhood is that of the righteous إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ so you have to choose a brother or a sister chooses a sister who really will help her to get closer to Allah, to build up her iman. We say in Arabic, uh, we have a famous saying, we say, As-sahibu sahib. The friend is a puller. He pulls you. Either if he is a righteous one, he pulls you towards righteousness. If he's wicked, towards wickedness, evil. Yes. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, made it clear when he advised us. He said, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي سبحان الله This beautiful hadith, لا تصاحب, never take as a close, intimate friend except a mu'min. ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي That's Those inner circle who are very close to you are the righteous. Why? Why? We have to question. Why? Because the mu'min, the believer, is a mirror of his brother. He reflects, he sees my faults, he sees my shortcomings. So he helps me to improve. But if I hang around with a person who doesn't believe in the first place, he is trying to actually take me away from the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's why you have to have someone who will help you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to build up your iman. So that's why the Prophet said, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا. Yes. So you, the friend that you choose, you take, is a mu'min. And you should be always in the company of the righteous. The company of the righteous. And the other beautiful hadith, which is, yeah. the Prophet sallallahu gave this parable. Okay, alayhi oh, salam, he said, مثل الجليس الصالح وجليس السوء. 
كحامل المسك ونافخ الكير سبحان الله The one who sells the musk and the one who the blacksmith. So right? he said the likeness or the similitude of the good friend, the good one, the righteous companion, the righteous friend, and the evil one, like the, the one who sells musk, the one who sells perfume. What do you find when you visit him? Nice smell. Or he might give you one bottle as a gift. Okay? Or at least, huh? He gives it, you see, as a sample. So when you come out, mashallah, you have that beautiful smell. Smell good, feel good. Yes. And the other, even if he doesn't give you anything, you smell good. You smell it. At least He's right. giving <laughs> to the customers. Yes. yes. Okay. But so the that... smell will reach you. So the atmosphere is beautiful and nice. And the other side, that like he said, like the blacksmith. This is the evil friend. You know, blacksmith, those people who use, you know, The ironsmith also, they call yeah, the, him ironsmith. Iron, yeah, yes. yeah, the ironsmith. So bad smell or a spark that will, what? Blow that will burn, burn your clothes. You know, a lot of people don't understand the blacksmith because nowadays you don't see blacksmiths all over the place. So maybe an example maybe that the youth nowadays can understand. It's like somebody who takes the trash, the garbage can, the rubbish, you know, the, when you hang around with them, of course, you're going to get dirty. No, no, you know, you know, if you, okay, if, yeah, you have, if you have a knife and you are sharp yeah, and you yeah, get yeah. to the grinder, And you see the sparks are coming? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this a spark will come and? Burn your clothes. And, and it doesn't have a good smell. Those of you who have seen it. Of course, seen. yes. <laughs> it smell, doesn't smell good at all. So the importance here is that you have a righteous companion who will really help you to actually to remain steadfast. Because some brothers, mashallah, now, alhamdulillah, they came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started practicing. But unfortunately, some they go back. <laughs> the reason that there is no company. Righteous company who will keep you strengthening one another. There are situations, at least I've received in some emails or some of the communication, where someone says many times, I'm by myself in the school. All my friends are bad and nobody's interested. They think I'm a fundamentalist, I'm an extremist. What advice do we have to someone or for someone who is in this predicament? They really can't find a nearby friend that can help them in this fashion. Do they? Are they doomed, as one may say, khalas, your, you know, your chances? No, don't give up, Akhi. Yeah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. strengthen your iman. And you are really, you are making jihad, okay? You are now, in, and your ajr actually It's much great. It's great. It's very great because you are struggling. You are overcoming all. And you know what? The sense of defeating the nafs. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Nothing greater. Allah, you know? When you feel that, the, that feeling when, yes, I... I manage to control my nafs. You should look also if there are Muslims are in the same college on this, and you should, inshallah, get together. And to elaborate a little bit on, on what Sheikh Salam was saying about the hadith, when the Prophet said they said that you do not befriend except for a believer, he didn't stop there, alayhi salatu wasalam. He went to, it's not just enough to be a Muslim. He said the taqi, the one who has the taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, ittaqullah. Oh, you who believe, fear Allah, وَكُونُ مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ And be with those who are the truthful. So we see in, in this hadith and in the effect of the taqwa. And that's not just enough to believe. You have to have the issue of the taqwa. And when we look in, in, into the Qur'an, the sunnah, we see so much of this. The example, we talk about not giving up. The famous hadith about the man who killed 99, 99 people. people. Now imagine this. 99 people. And they would put him on trial nowadays for a genocide, right? Yeah. <laughs> 99, 99 people. people, and then he killed the hundredth. When he went to the scholar to ask him for the advice about what to do, what did the scholar tell him to do? After he told him, he asked him, can I make Toba? He made him, okay, don't give up. He said, who can block the doors of Toba of repentance for you? Nobody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept any, that you repent from, any sin that you repent from, he'll accept from you. And then he said, but, lakin, inna ka bi ardi su. He said, very you're in, a, in an evil land. So go to this and then, because very there's people who are pious there worshiping Allah, so worship Allah with him. So you see once again, the good atmosphere, the good atmosphere, the good environment. So what happens, like what you mentioned, and he, if he's just by himself, you need to remind yourself that the haq, as Ibn Mas'ud said, it's, and he, what's important is the haq, even if you're by yourself. And we have to remember on the day of judgment, we have the, the love and the hope, we always talked about, And we saw this in the hadith of the person who killed the nine. This is hope for you. Go here. Also, you have to remind yourself about that great day. 
on that great day and the, the beautiful verses and I told this to some of my students and we reflect on benefiting from anything we see in this life I told them I said I benefited from you when you were taking your exam because what were they doing when they were taking exams because this particular class they're jokers they like to joke around and laugh and have fun and they don't like to study when they sat down in that exam room what were they doing biting the biting. fingers so I remember the verse the Lord Subhanahu said what did he say? The day that the oppressor, the one who oppresses him, is biting on his fingers. But I'm getting that... You know, you know, exaggeration yeah. even yeah, more. Yeah. But now because I'm getting that look from uh, Sheikh Wajdi, that's, it's break time. So. But can, continue the ayah. We'll continue. We'll finish the verse after the break, inshallah. Ta'eev, inshallah. So we'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. <laughs> hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah, the absolute and eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There is nothing like him. Focus on the source of wisdom. The Quran is a magnet. The Sunnah. Is a revelation. Islam had the solution right from the beginning. We apply that and the problem is solved. Focus on the solution for our world. There is no man on the face of earth. His life was narrated to us like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Poor, rich, white, black, Arab, non-Arab. Everybody say the same word. Obey Allah, obey the messenger. Focus on the Akhirah. Tawbah is mandatory upon each and every Muslim. Success for the Muslim is having the correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has power over all things. Has power over all things. Focus on the facts and realities that motivate the world towards Islam. In Islam in Focus, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back. You were saying something before the break. You wanted to complete the ayah. Sorry we interrupted you, sir. You know, we started on, on the ayah to reflect on the day. We talk about who we befriend and the effect it has on the day of judgment. The reality, all of us deep down, we know about that day. This ayah is so beautiful because the way it's so descriptive. It said, Yawma wa la day. The day when the oppressor, the one who oppressed himself by being disobedient to Allah, by turning away from the remembrance of Allah, by turning away from Allah, that what Allah ordered him to do, he will be biting on his fingers from regret, and he's literally biting down on them. What will he say? Ya laytani ittakhattu ma'a rasooli sabila. 
He said, I wish I had took with the Prophet a way. I wish I had followed the Sunnah of the Prophet I wish I had followed the way of the Salihin, of those who were pious. I wish I had kept good company. Then he says, Ya wailata, laytani lam ittakhid fulanan khalila. And he say, woe unto me. I wish I didn't take so-and-so as a friend. Why? What did so-and-so do to you? لَقَدْ أَضَّلَّنِي عَنَ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدْ إِجَّاءَنِي He said that verily he made me turn away from the remembrance after it came to me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of who influences to do this. He says, وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ الْإِنْسَانِ خُذُولَ That the shaytan was for the human being khudula, that he tricks him. He pulls you in. He beautifies this dunya for you. He's the one who beautifies the bad deed. He beautifies being with the, the bad boys. And he backs back. Yes. He and then he, and then, and you. he leaves you at the time. Khadula, he leaves you by yourself. He's an abandoner. Abandoner, exactly. He abandons you at the time. He he's he's humiliates you, actually. He, he abandons and yeah. humiliates you. Like, There's like, another ayah, right? You in and where Allah described what Shaitan will say at the end. That's called me. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself, exactly. I cannot save you. You were saying something. Before you were mentioning this particular point, uh, we spoke about a person who didn't have anybody, and he's alone. What can he do? We have to understand that the prophets and messengers were examples for us. Allah and they are leaders in patience, in strength. And when you reflect upon Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, it's an amazing example in that he is in Egypt alone, alone, a youth with all kinds of trials and tribulations in terms of women, the society. But he was, he, was, he, he was a slave. He was sold as a slave. And he was so young, but alone. No Muslims around him. But he was still able to uphold Islam and be strong. And but you understand what happened to him in the end because of his patience. And most people, they don't realize that patience isn't just patience because of a calamity and he had to go through all of it there's patience in the obedience of Allah and then there's patience in abstaining from that which is haram and then the third type is patience when a calamity befalls upon a person and he had all of that by himself use that as an example and see how what he became in the end what he became in the end the harder your trials and tribulations the greater your reward is in this life and the hereafter I remember you know, besides the issue in, his, in the prison and how he eventually yes, came out, yes. I remember that some of the scholars, or one of the scholars, he, in studying Surah Yusuf, he deduced the following, that Allah Azza wa Jal, at the end, if you read the surah, you will find often Allah saying that this is how Allah rewards the muhsineen. The yes. muhsineen. The muhsineen. So that, that state of ihsan, which is basically worshipping Allah as if one can see Allah, and if one cannot reach that level, then one bears in mind that Allah is observing him, Yes. That level of ihsan is what made us speak about Yusuf now, alayhi yes. salatu salam. And so he's an example that it can be done. It's difficult. But if Yusuf was tempted by women and he abstained and stayed away from it, then he was put in prison. Didn't cry, didn't, and, I mean, it's amazing. They didn't complain. It can be done. Yusuf, we just have to be more, we have to be stronger. That's right? our we're example. Stronger. It's just our example. And the, Allah mentions these stories for us to reflect and yes, to, to find reflect. guidance through them. Yes. And it's sad that now, you know, some of the youth, I mean, you can imagine them standing in front of the mirror, you know, flexing, see, let me see how big this is, and <laughs> measure this. The idea of strength and, and power is related, and, you know, strictly to appearance and fitness and uh, being, you know, built. And the real strength, as the Prophet ﷺ, is not that you can wrestle someone, right? Where's the real strength? In being able to contain yourself and, you know, restrain control from Control your that emotions and that. control your desires. This requires Iman strong Iman to, I mean, to face all these uh, temptations and overcome the, the desires. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he put more emphasis that you should have righteous company. Because by having such good people around you that they strengthen you and they boost up and they strengthen your Iman. And Iman is very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in life. It's very essential. And this Iman, it, it rises and falls. It rises, increases, and decreases. And uh, we can put it of a formula, mathematical formula. Iman equal, there are three main elements. This is important because yeah. I think a lot of people have the misconception that Iman yeah, is yeah, just here, are, right? Yeah, three, yeah some people. There are three, I'm good inside. Okay, there are three variables in this equation. Okay, Iman equal utterance by the tongue 
conviction in the heart and action by the limbs. And all these three variables are multiplied, not added. Okay? Now, if, for example, any one of the three variables changes, the product also will change. So if any of the three variables increase, the product will increase. And we feel it. You yeah. feel it, your Iman increases in Ramadan. Good example, Ramadan, exactly. Huh? In Ramadan, because your dhikr, mashallah, your tongue is busy in dhikr, reading the Quran, that so your right. Iman increases. Okay? And also, the actions of Ramadan, taraweeh and all the five prayers and all these. Fasting, special okay? so that Stay away from the bad deed. Also in Ramadan. In Ramadan, they, they tell you it is Ramadan, okay? Yeah, we we are doing it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. After Eid, okay. Yeah. Because you know, in Ramadan, so all the devils or most of the rebellious devils yeah. are yeah. Chained, 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 shackled. Okay? So you feel the barakah. So these things, that we feel that they increase. And also, the conviction itself can increase. And how can you increase this conviction in the heart? That is by the ilm. That's by the knowledge. The more knowledge you, you have, the stronger the conviction will be in your heart. For example, the Iman of someone who knows about the Jannah, about, and all the details, is not like someone who just had an idea. There is Jannah idea. and he doesn't know the, the details. And uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how to give life to the dead. Rabbi arini kayfa tuhil mawta. Oh Allah, show me how you give life to, give life to the dead. That's what Ibrahim said. And Allah asked him, Awalam tu'min? Haven't you believed? He said, Bala, I believe. But, Walakin liyatma'inna? Qalbi. Qalbi, to have more uh, surety, certainty, yaqeen in my, my heart. heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know that, He told him, take four pigeons, birds, and cut them, and mix their flesh, and then distribute them on the mountains around you, and then call them. They will come Subhanallah. Back to Allah. Allah. Subhanallah. And they came fluttering their wings. Some narrations they say he kept the heads in his hands. And then he just plucked the head. So now question about Iman of Ibrahim Ali is hitting Subhan the sky. Yes. Okay? The Iman now will be totally different. The Iman now will not be like his Iman before. So the Iman, my dear brothers and sisters, is very essential. And it is also not only essential, we have to protect this Iman. We have to safeguard this Iman. So the Iman is something is precious, valuable. We should protect this Iman. And there is a real thief who wants to steal your Iman. And that is the Shaitan. The shaitan, he walks in your iman, he wants to steal your iman. And you will not spare any effort. So you need to protect this iman. And how you protect this iman? By protecting and using these five senses only. In the obedience in the, of in Allah. In the obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something you mentioned is the key, which is the issue of the knowledge, the ilm. Yes. Now you mentioned, we mentioned the past episode, Sheikh Sam was talking about the issue that the main problems that all of us face, is the youth and everybody else, it comes from two main things, two main paths the shaitan uses on us, which is the shubahat, the doubts, and the shahwat, the lust and desires. How can he be strong, build a, a fortress against the shaitan? It's with, through the knowledge. If, this, if we, our youth, knowledge learn about the, the religion, first of all, you're going to see, like you mentioned, the iman, with your ilm, with your knowledge, your iman, your faith is going to skyrocket. Once you know Allah better, you know the greatness of Allah, beautiful names, attributes, you know that you're only, everything you do is only for him. And your whole life is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart becomes attached to Allah. This is going to make your iman go. Now, any shubah that comes, any type of doubts, anybody say about Islam, you only go in certainty. In several lectures, I've challenged people. We talked about the issues of, the, that we talked in the past episodes also, of the things that harm you. Anything Allah made haram, it's harmful. I said, let's put it on the table. Make anything that's haram in Islam, and we'll show you the beauty of Islam through this. We debate in lectures about why the things were haram and the benefits of staying away from them. Also, you know, there are are two things that will raise a person's status in this life more than anything else, this life and the hereafter. It's knowledge and iman. It's knowledge and iman. Those are the two things that raise the two things in the ayah is that 
Allah will yeah, any... raise the person's status. status. Those who, who believe and those who have the knowledge. SubhanAllah. Allah will raise them in ranks. So the advice which we have for the youth is, you need to get your Iman rolling. And you can get your Iman rolling through beneficial knowledge. That you will not find in a PlayStation game, nor will you find it on Nintendo, or in a, watching a soap opera about how Romeo fell in love with Juliet. That you will get by reading the books of the scholars, listening to the lectures of the scholars, and attaching yourself to the sources of knowledge in Islam. And furthermore, just to add to this, uh, if you are by yourself in this school, and everybody else is misguided, and you find that you are by yourself, nowadays in modern technology, that's not even possible anymore. Because there's email, you can communicate with the people, even if they are outside your city, outside the country, you can stay in touch with the people of knowledge, and the people of da'wah, I mean, there's no excuse. You have the means to continue. Another quick reminder is, let's not forget, when we look at the examples of the Prophet Yusuf and other ones who are by themselves, Prophet as I mentioned in the hadith, that on the day of judgment, a Prophet will come, he has two people with him. The prophet will come have one person with him. The prophet will come have nobody with him. So, and he being by yourself, all time, and other times you could have some good in it as well. And then they need to remember that the ajr, always the ajr, like you guys mentioned, it's gonna keep getting more and more and more any, the more difficult it is. So, and it could be, like you say, a blessing in disguise. You never know. So our dear youth, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to facilitate your affairs and to make it easy for you and to grant you steadfastness and to help us all actually act upon the teachings of Ameen. Islam. Ameen. Don't Ameen. despair and don't run out of, of Iman or energy. Uh, it's a short life even if it appears long. Soon you'll be in the grave and you'll appreciate the fact that you acted upon the advice which you heard. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, we will continue in the future with other episodes dealing with other topics that are relevant to you and your everyday life. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.